Hi right, guys, just enjoying the view from my house today. Uh, but enough of that. I'm going to be fitting an outside tarp in this wall here. This video is going to be a step by step guide and hopefully you find it of some use. this wall this is the just the inner uh, wall of my garage here uh, so what we need to do is uh, establish where we want this to come through um, take some measurements transfer those measurements to the outside of the garage wall and drill from the outside and goes without saying I've already checked this area you know for pipes or cable uh, there's no pipes that's the main water supply coming in we're clear to drill in this area right so we've taken our measurements we've transferred them to the outside wall here okay we've just made a mark on the wall and that's where we're going to drill Right guys, so for drilling a hole through the wall, um, this is the, the tool kit we'll need. Um, obviously the most important thing is an SDS drill. An SDS drill is a slotted drive shaft. That's what SDS stands for. What I normally use is three drill bits. Uh, so we've got an 8mm, 18mm and a 22mm. So what we do is do it in stages. So we'll go through with the 8mm, the 18 and then the 22 Parts here are for sleeving. Now you can either sleeve the hole with 22mm copper or there is a cheaper, cheaper alternative. Uh, which is overflow pipe, and um, this is what I use quite a lot, um, 21.5mm in diameter. You want a really robust uh, lining for the whole copper's the way to go, but you know, for an outside tap or for cable, uh, overflow pipes are yeah, more than adequate. In order to establish the thickness of the wall that you're going through, uh, the first thing to do is either go to a door frame, you know, like this. This is the wall we're drawn into, or a window frame or anything, and that way you can determine the thickness of the wall you're going through. You know, hold the drill to the wall, you know, that's the depth of the wall there, so I'll just put a bit, little bit of tape on there. Right guys, before you start drilling anything, uh, especially with an SDS drill, uh, it's important to have some sort of ear defenders, either ear defenders, ear plugs, uh, whatever you comes to hand, good pair of safety glasses and uh, gloves. 8mm drill bit in, we've marked it, uh, so now we just the important thing is here, we need to drill slightly up the way. So we'll be drilling the hole in an upwards direction here. So we'll, we'll do that now. Guys, here's the 8mm drill we've just put through. Um, I've just came to this side just to show you. That's we can see it's through. Pull the 8mm drill out now. And just attach the 18mm. Like so. And it's simply a case of following that hole, you know, drilling, drilling through again. So here we go. Light in the garage at the other side through there, so we're through. Right, so the next part of the job is just to, to feed the, the lining pipe through. Goes nearly. Just push that until it's totally flush and then mark it from the inside, and then we'll cut that and then put it back in. Right, so we've fed the pipe through, we've marked it from the inside, yeah, just when it comes out, so you just cut it now. I've got pipe cutters here, but you can cut that with anything, probably a small hacksaw, anything like that. So, but for the purposes of this, I'll just cut it with this. Right, guys, once that's cut to size, put it back in the hole. Um, just a gentle tap back through. Right, guys, here's the final result. So, you can see right through into the garage there. Right, holes drilled. The hole's lined with the overflow pipe. Uh, now you'll just see there's a little bit of filler here. 
The reason I've done that is when you drill through a wall from the outside in, where the drill comes through, often kicks out the plasterboard and, and rips, you know, rips a section. So it's just a little bit untidy. So what I tend to do is just put a little bit of filler, quick drying filler uh, around the, the hole and that just tidies it up a little bit. I think guys, there's generally two types of, or two ways you can fit an outside tap, uh, two fixing methods if you like. Uh, this is my preferred method, which is the back plate. Uh, the reason I prefer that is uh, there's no there's a lot, there's no exposed pipe work you know for freezing in the winter. Uh, I'll link a clip here uh, just to show you what does happen when you leave water in the pipe in the winter. Obviously, the winter comes along in Scotland. The water, any water that's left in the pipe, expands when it freezes, and here's the end result. Okay, another style or fixing method is seen commonly here in the UK, which again is just a back plate design. Uh, the tap fitted there, a compression uh, joint there, and then it's just simply pipe through the wall. Um, these are actually good for, you know, when you isolate the water inside, for draining, uh, winterizing them or draining the water out in the winter. Just turn the tap on and there's, you know, because of the vertical flow here, it just automatically drains the tap. So there's no chance of that pipe freezing in the winter. Okay, so here's the, the back plate uh, without any tap fitted on it, obviously. Uh, this is what we're going to be using today. Uh, we'll just run through now the, the different types of taps you do actually get. Okay, so this is probably the most common tap you get. Uh, this is a half inch pip tap. Crucially, nowadays uh, they have a built in check valve, which is a non return valve, which is required. Um, that's good because it saves you fitting a non return valve inside in the pipework. So these are a good choice. Okay, another type you get is the lever tap, which is just a, simply a lever. Um, these are actually good for probably elderly people, you know, they're, they're just easier to open. Um, outside taps can be quite stiff sometimes to open. So these are good. Not so good if you've got kids, <laughs> but, you know, elderly people tend to like these types of taps, you know, for the garden. Okay, here's another type, uh, similar to the first one we showed you, but this is a, a Pegler outdoor tap which is actually high quality. You can probably see the quality. You can certainly feel the quality, especially when you open and close this tap. It's, it's fantastic, but it's, it's probably about three times the price of a normal tap. Um, I will leave links in the description to this tap and the other taps I've shown you, and all the materials, tools, and everything I've used. So just as usual, everything will be in the description, but this is a good tap. Another advantage of this one is the nozzle, you know, it's vertically down, so some people prefer that, you know, to put a bucket under or Instead of the other ones that come out at 45 degrees, they can't spray the water, you know, out at 45 degrees. These you can just run straight down. But they are rather expensive, but good taps all the same. Right guys, so as I said, this is my preferred uh, method of doing an outside tap. Uh, they do come in different lengths. Uh, so this one here is 400 millimetres, and this one here is 600 millimetres. Uh, now this one's handy. Um, Especially if you're working on an older property, you know, with thicker walls, especially old cottages, things like that. Um, that's handy to come, you know, right through and give you the length, as opposed to having a join in the middle, you know. You don't, whatever possible, you don't want to be joining this pipe within the wall. Yeah, another use of the longer pipe is when you, you come through a wall and you need to get through the back of a kitchen cabinet, which is sometimes the case. Uh, it generally extends the, the distance you need to come. So these are handy for that. Yeah, but, but in general, on modern properties at least, uh, the 400mm one so will be fine. Okay, so we're obviously going to be fitting this uh, plate to the wall. Uh, in this case, it's a Harold wall, uh, which is common in the UK here, uh, with little, you know, stones. Um, what I tend to do is, before I fit this, is take this out and just mark, smooth this area off with a, just a hammer, you know, just chip away at the stones. Simply chip away just to smooth the area and makes it easier you know, for, for marking and drawing. Right guys, just a quick tip here. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it's what I do. Um, if you notice the 15mm pipe within the sleeve, it, it, you know, there's quite a lot of play there. So it's quite difficult trying to get it centralised, um, the plate centralised. So what I do, I put on um, little O-rings that come in an O-ring kit. Just demonstrate that now. So slip the O-ring on. I obviously have two on, one on this end, one on this end. Slip it in and you can hopefully see, you know, that slips through the pipe and it just keeps this dead centre, you know, and it makes it easier for, for screwing this plate onto the wall. Right, so I've slipped a couple of rings on, as I just explained, so there's one there and one there. Now we can feed this into the hole. Now 
now this is dead centre and it will not move you know with, you can see with the o-rings so you can see the difference with that so that, that makes marking these holes a lot easier so the next thing I do is get the tap that you're going to fit screw it all the way home into the, the plate like so no tape or no thread or anything at this stage we're just getting it tight so that's it tight you can see the, the thing spinning so once that's tight against it get your tap pretty much level and then we'll unscrew this and then that gives us the, the area where we want to mark these holes so now we can hold the plate unscrew the tap and these are the areas we're going to mark and drill ok so now we need to mark these holes where we're going to uh, drill and plug again favourite tool of mine which I would highly recommend for anybody is the grip it marksman it's especially good for for marking these types of holes it's just a shot of gas a little bit of chalk um, and it marks the, the holes perfectly so we'll put it in there and push in here push in here push you can see here there's not much space between where we're going to put the plug and you know the edge of the pipe here that's why I use a 22 millimeter SDS as opposed to a 25 or 26 you know if you can imagine using a 25 mil SDS or 26 you need hardly any material to play with you know to get your plug in to fix this tap so when using this wall plate design that I've showed you it's really important to keep this hole as you know narrow as possible and that allows you to get you know good fixings in here another way to you know uh, stop collapsing this hole if you like you know, when you're drilling is when you're drilling these holes drill them away from the the main hole here so if you can imagine your drill going in and it goes in straight angle up slightly so you're, you're actually drilling away you know into this more solid material there you'll be going drilling away drilling away so what i use is six millimeter fisher dual power plugs um i use these all the time never fail me so i'll be using those uh with 40 millimeter um you know external screws and to drill the holes i'll be using an sds x-force drill six millimeter again you don't need to use this you can use any masonry drill uh, with a hammer action drill it doesn't need to be sds but i've got it here so i'm just going to use it uh, and we'll drill the, the holes right guys so to start off with uh make sure your drill is not on hammer action just make sure it's in the drill in action not hammer all we're going to do here is score the marks with the drill so we simply place the drill on there Pulse it gently and you can see the mark. So we'll do that for all three. Right, so hopefully you can see we've scored the the mortar there with the, the drills. Now we can switch the drill on to hammer action. And drill these holes. Again, if you see, you see the angle I'm putting the drill at, I'm drilling away from the centre pipe. Can't stress that enough. Same with this one, drill away. Right guys, all the holes drilled, get the plugs in. Push them in, you'll see they're going away from the wall again, as I've said. hammer them home. Right guys, so let's just slip the, the pipe in now. Lines up perfectly. I'm going to pull this out slightly and then put a, a, a bead of clear silicon in behind, you know, around the pipe where it goes into the wall. Uh, this is what I use. I use Dow Corning 785 Plus. Okay, so just pull that out slightly. Now we'll just pump the clear silicon all the way around so a big splodge like that all the way around the pipe and then just we can now just squeeze the plate in against that and line it up okay so i'm just using 40 millimeter external grade screws and a small impact driver so just put each screw in a little bit at a time And then just tighten them off a little bit at a time. Don't go crazy. Uh, 
it's enough. Right, so that's absolutely solid now. Yeah, it's fully sealed in behind. Uh, so it's ready except the tap now. Right guys, before we put the tap on, we obviously have to wrap the threads in some sort of sealant uh, tape. So what I use is obviously a standard PTFE tape or a product called Loctite 55. Which is actually better, it's like a thread. Um, I'm assuming it'll be mainly DIY people that are watching this. So for the purposes of this video, we'll use PTFE tape on this tap. Okay, so obviously a thread's gonna go clockwise, this direction. So when you put PTFE tape on, we want to go anti-clockwise. So we want to be going this way. So here we're going anti-clockwise. Just wrap it around the threads, cross it over where you can. Just keep wrapping. It's going to need a good, you know, 15 sort of turns, I would think. You just got to experiment with it. Okay, so once you've got a good a load of turns on there, probably about 15 to start with, and just break it off, mold it around the thread. Make sure there's nothing obstructing, obstructing here. And then just work it into the tap. Okay, so you can see all the thread on there. Um, we're just gonna then get it into the tap now and just try and get it started off. It can sometimes be quite tight. Right, that's looking fine. And just twist this. And this should be fine, it's getting tight already. And the aim here is to finish up with the tap vertically. So just twist it. It's getting really tight now, so it's really tight now, so I can just force it in the vertical position. Yes, yeah, so if you are tightening this and it ends up, you know, down down here and it's solid, and you can't get it any tighter. Just take the tap out, put more tape on, get it back in, and try again until you get it to such a position that maybe it's here, like I showed you, and then tighten it up. Right, guys, that's the tap now in place. We've got it sealed here, we've got it silicon sealed in behind, so this is all good. Uh, now we can move inside and start doing up the connections. Alright guys, so here's us at the other side of the wall now. Um, this would typically be under your kitchen sink, if you're installing your own kitchen tap. Uh, outside tap, sorry. But one of the first things you need to determine is where you're going to take the feed from for your outside tap. But the normal thing to do is trace the, water, the cold water pipe from your, your tap, which will be above your sink, trace it down. You'd probably find a branch coming off, maybe going to a washing machine. Um, could be another one going to a dishwasher. Trace the line down. You know, it may run off to upstairs. You know, feel the taps upstairs or, or downstairs. Um, but it's, it's common sense. You just just make sure it's the cold feed. Choose an area of the cold feed that you're going to tap into, and then you know, figure out what what type of fittings you're going to use, how you're going to fit it, and what what run you're going to take to link up your outside tap. There's so many different versions, but I'll run through a few now. Okay, so regardless of what, what type of connection you're going to make here, whether it's push fit, compression joint, soldering, uh, speed fit, yeah, you know, um, this pipe needs to be cut back. So one of the first jobs to do is to cut this pipe back, uh, leave maybe a couple inches sticking out the wall. Okay, so to cut this pipe back uh, slightly, uh, we'll just use a pipe slice. What's this? This is a Baco one, but you can use any one you want, obviously. Um, there's many different variations of these, but this is what we'll use in this video, so simply flips onto the pipe like that, push it on, turn in the direction of the arrow and it'll give us a nice cut of that pipe, so just turn, that's it, cut. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, we're going to pretend this is the cold feed, uh, it could be going to a cold tap whatever, under your kitchen sink. We just know this is a good area to tap into, uh, to, to get onto this, the end of the outside tap. So whatever method we're going to use to, to join this together, uh, we're going to need a T-piece in here, a small bit of pipe, an isolation valve here, a bit of pipe and an elbow. So I'll show you different ways that you can do that uh, now. Um, I'll build the same configuration uh, using you know three or four different methods just to show how you can do it right guys so probably the easiest option uh, you know to link this together 
is the John Guest Speed Fit or Push Fit fittings. This is John Guest Speed Fit, probably the most common. Um, it's very easy to use. So this elbow here, for example, here's the elbow. Bit of copper pipe. Insert. Push. That's it. That's going nowhere. That's sealed. So basically, all these fittings just push together. And importantly, here we have an isolation valve. So this again, this is a John Guest Speed Fit isolation valve, which gives you the ability to isolate the water by turning the screw um, in the winter time. You know, just to isolate the the water supply to the tap. That's pretty much it. That's it done. Very easy. Has to be said when you actually put put the pipe into these fittings, they do have to be tightened down and locked off. So these little collars here, screw down, tighten them up, and that locks them off. Uh, and that's them, um, pretty much job done. Okay, obviously with uh, push fit fittings as well, you don't have to use copper pipe. Uh, you can use the special, this is John Guest speed fit pipe. But you, the only thing you have to remember if you're using this, uh, you have to use inserts. So if we're using a push fit pipe, uh, push fit fitting on this pipe, you need a super seal insert like this. So you just push that in, and then you can put the fitting on top and then push that, and that's that done. Uh, if you're going to be using a compression fitting on this pipe, which you can, you can use compression fittings on this plastic pipe, but you need to put a different type of insert in. So it's just a solid plastic insert that goes in. Same again, just insert it into the pipe. Yeah, just insert it into the pipe, and that will then allow you to use a compression fitting on the plastic pipe. Okay, so the one thing I would say about using these fittings under sinks, there is a, a very slight risk of maybe the fitting getting pulled apart if there's kids mucking about under the sink. You know, all they need to do is unscrew that, push this collar in, and the pipe pulls out. You can un imagine that under mains pressure, you just, you'd just have a flood in no time, you know, so we'll put that back. But there is one thing you can do. I'm just taking this up. You can actually buy these sort of horseshoe clips. Um, actually clip in between the collar and the fitting. So we'll just push that in. I don't know if you can see that, but if you can see the clip in there. So now with the clip in there, what that does, it means it's impossible to loosen this off now. It's impossible to push this collar up as well, so it's a safety mechanism really. You fit this to every, you know, uh, fitment. Um, there's just no no chance this is going to come off. Right guys, so that's the speed fit method. Um, the only thing with this, these fittings, they do, they're, they're quite bulky and quite unsightly. But again, it's under a sink, it's in a kitchen unit, nobody's going to see it. Um, I wouldn't have an issue with doing this. Um, you know, a lot of guys would. You know, the ideal scenario here is to solder everything. But for the, the DIY type job, yeah, these are more than adequate if you know how to use them properly as hopefully I've demonstrated here. Right guys, here's the next method that could be used. Um, this is probably the most, the neatest and the most professional method, which is uh, obviously the solder joints with a compression isolation valve in the center. Uh, these are Yorkshire fittings, so what that means is the, the fittings, if you can see the rings around the fittings, they, are, they actually contain solder within the fitting. So all you need to do is flux the, clean the pipe, flux the pipe, and then obviously, you know, just Just heat the pipe up, um, and the solder would run around the joints, you know. So clean, flux, heat, withdraw the heat, and that's it done. You know, it's simple as that. Um, same here with the elbow. With this install, I, I'm not going to be soldering this because there's, there's actually a plastic sleeve uh, within the hole, as you've seen. I don't want to be, you know, blasting this with heat up, just melt and create a right mess. Uh, so I will be using another method for for my install. But this is certainly one you can use. Uh, this is the isolation valve, which is that compression joint. Um, move the lever that way to get the water out to the tap. That way to isolate. Um, not ideal if you've got kids, you know, they could probably muck about with that under the sink. Uh, but you can remove these plastic handles. Or you could use a isolation valve such as this. Which again, is just exactly the same as that, but you need a, a screwdriver to isolate it. Stick a screwdriver in, turn it a 
up and down the way and it isolates the water. So you could use either or. Um, you could even use the, the push fit, the John Guest uh, speed fit one I showed you earlier. Just chuck that in there, push the pipes into it and that would be just as good. So there's a few methods you could use, but overall <coughs> this is the, the Solvard method. Alright guys, next method, the good old compression fittings. We've all seen these, uh, you know, not an olive. Put the pipe in, tighten the, the nut up and it compresses the olive onto the pipe and creates the seal. Uh, very good, uh, very strong if done properly. Uh, I normally use jointing compound on the olives when I'm doing these just as I belt and braces approach. Uh, I'll show you a little clip of how I do that there, it's just a paste that goes around the olive. I'll show you that now. I always use uh, jointing compound uh, just around the olives just to help seal. Uh, it's just like a double protection really. Uh, Yeah, so put the paste around the olive, tighten these up, um, it's very rarely leak, to be honest, they're really strong. The one downside of these is they're expensive, uh, you know, in, in general terms, and they're quite difficult sometimes, and cramped, it's okay here, but in a cramped area, like under a sink, it can be quite difficult, you know, holding the fittings and getting them tightened up correctly, because um, they do need to be tightened up to a correct sort of torque. Um, which is usually learned through experience. You know, if you don't do them up tight enough, they'll leak. Uh, if you over tighten them, they'll leak. So it, it's somewhere in between, to be honest. But again, very good. Um, very good fittings to use. Right, another method which I've seen used is the, it's like a washing machine isolation valve type thing. So it's a T-piece, 50 mil compression fittings with a three quarter inch uh, thread on here. And here's your isolation valve here. So, it's just a different way of doing it. Here we have the John Guest Flexi, Flexi hose with a push fit connection. So again, same as the push fit fittings, just pushes on, that's fine. Again, um, the, this, this type of equipment would be used with a, where probably space is really cramped, it's really difficult to get any piping sort of done, you know. Um, so they do have their uses. Again, a lot of people don't like these because they, I mean, they, they can, they can, they've been known to fail, you know, after a lot of years of service. But uh, personally, I've never had an issue with them. Um, but it's, a, it's another way of doing it. Uh, so it's a 15 mil push fit fitting on one end, three quarter inch threaded fitting on the other end. Um, I'll take the, I'll undo this just to show you what it looks like. So there's our T-piece, and here's the end of the speed fit hose that fits on. I don't know if you can see the rubber in there. But this is a three-quarter fitting, just fits onto there and just nipped up, and that does the job. So it's another way of doing it. Right, another way that I've came across, well, another method that I've seen, uh, normally by DIYers to be honest, is if you can imagine this already in situ with a washing machine hose or a dishwasher hose connected to it, you can buy these Y pieces. Um, plastic wide pieces. So you could just disconnect uh, the washing machine hose off of this fitting here, put the Y piece in, reconnect your washing machine hose here, use your three quarter inch fitting here and go on your outside tap. Uh, I strongly would never recommend this method. Um, but sadly you do see it you do see it quite often. Along with those uh, silly taps that you see cutting into the pipe, you know that they're, they're sold in you know B and Q and places like that. Um, you get the ones that clamp onto the pipe and you pierce the pipe. Um, they're terrible, really terrible. You see them, it's like a bit of garden hose that goes through the wall. <clears throat> and the flow from the tap is just ridiculous because it's a, a little pinhole that's feeding the, the water supply. So we would definitely not recommend them. Definitely not recommend this method either. Right, so I'm just going to rig this up uh, temporarily just now, just so we can demonstrate the tap working outside. Uh, I'm going to take the easy option. I'm going to disconnect this here and disconnect up to my rig. I've just got a, a rig here already. This is on the mains water supply. My gauge was just testing the water pressure. But I'll just take this off, connect that up, and I'll be a tap ready to go. Hi right, guys, there's my install. <laughs> I'm only joking, it's just temporary. Um, I've just temporarily rigged this up. So this is going to the outside tap here. Um, I'll do all this properly. Um, once I fit all my sink and everything in here. Okay guys, that's the tap, all rigged up. I'll just turn it on, test it. There we go. Okay, 
got working fine. One thing I will say, when you buy these taps, you always get these silly connectors here, where the hose has to be put on and secured with a circlip. So whenever I'm installing these for people, I always usually take this off. And I'll usually carry hose lock connectors with me, like this. So these are the standard hose lock connectors, which just screw on. Standard three quarter inch fit in. Yeah, so screw that on and then that enables you to connect your typical hose lock connector from your garden hose. It just clips on. That's it. Of course, if you don't want to use these, you can always just put the hose on in the, the supplied fitting. Which is that, and then circle it onto there. But 90% of people would use these that I've seen, so that's it. Alright guys, hopefully you found that video informative. If you did, please give the video a like. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button there. Uh, feel free to leave any comments, uh, any queries if you're going to be doing this yourself. I'll do, do my best to help you out. Also, all the items used in this video will be linked in the description, so click on the show more, that'll open up the description, and you'll see links to everything that was used uh, in this video. Hopefully that'll be of some help to you and save you some time. Alright guys, well, thanks again, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.